Hi everyone, my name is Josh Phillips and I'd like to thank Benny for allowing me to participate in this video blog. Today what we're going to talk about is affect in sports. And I want to talk about affect in sports in two ways. First I want to talk about the emotional reaction that athletes have to their sport. And second I want to talk about the emotional reaction that fans have uh, to the athletes or, or the team that they're cheering on. So first I'll say this. Oh, as a person who's a former athlete, I can count the number of times I have cried in my life. Um, and that's five. I can remember all five moments. That in everything ever happened in my life. Um, three of those moments uh, were directly related to sports. Um, and the reason I say that, uh, and the, you know, the last couple days as I've been thinking about you know, why that is, um, I want to make sure that we mark when we're talking about this idea of whether or not people should or shouldn't be emotionally react, uh, reactive to sports and whether or not that's problematic. Um, I want to say that you know, people are emotionally reactive to sports. And so the question for me isn't whether or not it's good or bad. The question for me is, you know, why do people get so emotionally attached to their sport? And I've kind of come up with two, two reasons here as an athlete. First is the amount of time that goes into training for your sport. Um, and then the second that kind of gets off of that is when you put that much time into one particular item, your identity becomes that thing. Um, so as a person who uh, was, was trained throughout high school to become a state champ in 2002, then I was recruited D1 to go out and, and do Division I sports, you're talking about working out five or six hours a day. Um, I really like the way that Lolo Jones described it as she was interviewed during the Summer Olympics all the time. Um, she talked about you know, working out six hours a day every day for four years for a 10 second race. And when you really start to contemplate what that means, you know, many of us, you know, working on our PhDs or our master's degrees, you know, we work five or six hours a day, you know, when it comes to crunch time, um, doing our work, but we also recognize that we have more than one opportunity to get that article published. We have more than one opportunity to finish our dissertation. We, as academics, could even leave the academy for 10 years, come back, and try again if we don't get that PhD the first time. Whereas an athlete, they put in all this work and effort, and if their body doesn't peak by the time they're 25, 26, that opportunity isn't coming back around when they're 45 or 50 years old. You know, so someone else I think about, when I think about the time, uh, when I think about this finite window to really express yourself, to really express your identity, uh, is Jordan Weber. So in the, in the Olympics, uh, Jordan Weber, you know, her only goal in life, she said, was to be an Olympic all-around champion at 17 years old. You know, at 17, she, all she talked about was her goal in life was to be an all-around Olympic gold medalist champion. She gets to the Olympics, and she misses the cut. And she's not allowed to participate in the final round to become an all-around Olympic gold medalist. She has this huge breakdown. Now, for, for me, if I was to fail out of school, or if I had to take a medical emergency, or if I didn't pass my prelims, right, like, there's other chances for me to express myself academically. For Jordan Weber, she could come back in four years at 21 uh, and try again. Um, but if we're realistic, most Olympic gold, uh, most Olympic uh, uh, athletes, w women gymnasts, aren't over the age of 20. Um, and those who are over the age of 20 aren't participating uh, for an all-around medal. They're, you know, they're very skilled at one or two events, and, but they're not going after everything. Um, and so that becomes a very hard thing for a person to realize when that's your only opportunity to affirm all that hard work you put into it. Uh, so another person who put in a ton of hard work, i got a list of athletes here. Um, if you want to see an emotional reaction as far as someone's time and dedication, you know, 
being cathartically expressed. Um, go look up Morgan Eusenes' 1500 meter final lap at the 2012 Games. Uh, so Morgan Eusenes, we think about a person who runs the 1500 meters, which is just almost a mile uh, for those Americans watching. Uh, all the time spent on the track, all the time spent over four years getting ready for the Olympics, all the time spent on backcountry roads at 5.30 in the morning, right, working out. And her identity really became a runner. Like if you do something for six hours a day every day, you can't help it. That's, that's just who you are. You don't have much time to develop any other identity except that athletic competition. Um, and so when she gets to the Olympics and she falls in the final lap, all of that just emotion just comes out on the track, all right? And she's just bent over on the track, literally pounding the pavement with her hands. And for me, watching that, I was watching it live, I mean, I got sick. Like, my stomach went into knots. I recognized that that is four years of commitment that all of us, like, there's just huge questions about the time and the energy and the effort that was put into that one moment and to fall short of your goals of meddling in the Olympics. You know, that hurts. That can hurt a lot. Um, you know, like I said, you know, I was a, I was a wrestler. Um, I was a state champ in 2002. I went D1. Um, I can tell you, you know, when I stopped wrestling, I didn't know what to do with myself. Um, there was a, you know, you have six hours a day that you didn't have before that you have to fill with something. Um, you know, some athletes I think about when it comes to this idea of identity and whether or not you should have an emotional reaction to sports. You know, you think about Brett Favre, who came back two, three times. Um, came back with the Jets, then he came back with the Vikings twice, and even people were trying to push him out, saying he was too old to compete. And how I can think about it is, he's too old to compete, but he's also only 40 years old, right? Like a person whose entire 40 years of life has been, he's got another half of his life to live, and what he knows how to do is throw a football really, really well. All right, so his identity gets so wrapped up on this, and then when you no longer get to compete at that, you have this big identity crisis. You, you can't compete at the same level you did in your prime, and now you don't know what else you're good at because you've been so wrapped up in this athletic competition for so long. Um, quickly, you know, a couple things about the fans. Um, the fans also get invested in the players, uh, and they can get invested in the players for a couple reasons. First, they understand what the players have gone through. So for myself, uh, one of the hardest moments as a fan uh, was watching Barry Sanders retire two years short of winning uh, or setting the record for the most rushing yards in the NFL. Um, you know, when that happened, I was in junior high, and it, it hurt me to see Barry Sanders go out like that. He didn't have a Super Bowl ring. He had never been to a Super Bowl. For me, greatest running back of that era. Um, and to watch him walk off the field because he no longer could take you know, what the Detroit Lions were doing as far as her organization was concerned. You know, to walk off the field two years short of being the all-time greatest running back you know, that was a hard moment for me to watch because I'd followed his career for so long that I wanted him to succeed and I wanted him to get that, that title. I wanted him to get to the Super Bowl. Um, you know, I really felt like he had put in the time and the effort and to, to earn, earn that. Um, and the truth is that, you know, nobody's guaranteed this stuff. Um, is that it, it happens or it doesn't happen for folks. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. Um, uh, so, you know, we, we go through, through all this stuff, uh, you know, and, and one thing I, I, I think that we can talk about when it comes to um, emotional reactions in sports is that, for me, I, I like sports. Um, I think it's good that people have emotional reactions to it. Uh, the difference between, you know, doing sports for me and getting a PhD is that sports, there's such a 
there's such a finite time in which you can excel at it, uh, and there there aren't any second chances. Um, you know, even if you even if you are the the greatest and you get to the you know you get to the Super Bowl one year, you know, and you lose, you got to go back and you have to be in zero zero. Um, you know, fans go through the same thing. You know, when fans cheer on their teams and they 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 make the Super Bowl and they don't win it, you know. Cubs fans have been waiting over a hundred years, you know, for the Cubs to win another World Series. Um, you get invested in your team year after year because you want them to succeed, and you recognize that if they don't do it this year, you know, next year they got to start off zero and zero, just like everybody else. Uh, so there's just this, there's a finite amount of time that goes into you know whether or not you can be a great athlete, um, whereas you know. In lots of other areas in life, there there are more second chances available, um, and so I think it's fine that people get emotionally involved in sports. I would encourage it. Um, so the final thing I'll say is this: uh, is that sports are a great opening to start exploring this idea of just affect, um, specifically in in more masculine spaces. Uh, I think it's a good thing that that men are able to have a space where they feel comfortable sort of expressing themselves. Um, what I would encourage is for us to continue to figure out you know why men feel comfortable in a locker room um, or on a ball field expressing themselves um, and just sort of figure out more opportunities for them to express themselves uh, as opposed to saying uh, it's good that they are emotionally attached to sports, it's bad they're emotionally attached to sports. So let's just say they are emotionally attached to sports, and where else can they be emotionally attached to things? All right, thanks.